Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has issued directives to increase the monthly allowances for the 11,000 orphans and widows sponsored by the Royal Humanitarian Foundation. His Majesty King Hamad directed the R. HF under the leadership of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanity and Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, and RHF's Board of Trustees Chairman, to oversee the disbursement of the extra amounts and follow up on the implementation of the kind royal gesture, aimed at alleviating the financial burdens faced by orphans and widows. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser extended deepest thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King, the RHF's Honorary President, for the distinguished kind gesture confirming the King's fatherly care for widows and orphans and constant interest in meeting the needs of all social segments and providing the requirements of decent living for them under various circumstances. He indicated that the RHF will implement the Royal Directives to the fullest as soon as possible in order to achieve their noble goals. His Highness Sheikh Nasser pointed out that the Royal Initiative is no stranger to His Majesty the King, who is always keen to provide all kinds of support for his loyal people, adding that the kind gesture reflects His Majesty the King's constant interest in meeting the needs of orphans and widows. The Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Dr. Mustafa Sayed, said that His Majesty the King is always at the forefront in meeting the needs of everyone on all occasions and under various circumstances, noting that the kind gesture reflects the King's interest in ensuring decent, secure and stable life for orphans and widows. He pointed out that upon His Highness's Sheikh Nasser's directives, the RHF will implement the royal gesture by crediting the allowances and bank accounts of the 11,000 orphans and widows in July with an increase of 20%. He said that the increase in the monthly allowances for RHF-sponsored orphans and widows is in line with the sound approach adopted by His Majesty the King since the establishment of the RHF. Cycle News, one of the most popular cycling websites, has selected the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Supreme Council for Youth and Sports Affairs Chairman, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to be among the 50 most influential figures in the sport of cycling. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was ranked 29th out of the 50 influential personalities, as the list included many famous figures in the world of cycling, including riders, team managers, sponsors, heads and business agents. The selection is the outcome of His Highness's much devoted time to the development of the sport by launching the Bahrain Cycling Team that has been renamed to the Bahrain McLaren Cycling Team. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was also keen to provide full support for the sport of cycling, which has become one of the prominent sports in the Kingdom of Bahrain and has cultivated many international achievements, as well as becoming one of the most famous sports that represent the Kingdom in foreign participations. His Highness expressed his sincere pleasure for being selected among the 50 most influential figures in the sport of cycling, noting that this selection underscores Bahrain's status in the sport. His Highness also noted that Bahrain McLaren cycling team will continue the march of success achieved in the last period through the upcoming post in which the team will strive to reap further achievements. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Engineer Isam bin Abdullah Khalaf, stressed that the Agriculture and Marine Resources Department will strengthen its partnership with the private sector in the field of fish farming in order to increase the production of the Bahrain National Maricultural Center in Ras Hayyan. During a visit to the center, the minister was briefed about the center's facilities and stressed the importance of maintenance ahead of the new fish farming season, during which the center's production capacity will be increased in cooperation with the private sector. The minister also followed up on the efforts being exerted to prepare lands allocated for the private sector. The minister indicated that this step comes as a continuation of the success achieved by the rehabilitation and training program for a number of Bahraini caters in fish farming that the ministry has set up in cooperation with Tamkeen and aimed to train 15 Bahrainis in the field of local fish farming inside and outside Bahrain. He emphasized that the fish farming sector constitutes an important goal in the ministry's strategy. He pointed to the continuous efforts to attract more private sector companies to launch investment projects that would maximize local fish production in order to achieve self-sufficiency in the kingdom. The minister was accompanied by the Agriculture and Marine Resources Under Secretary Dr. Nabil Abu fatih and senior marine biologist Basim Ashwaykh. 
Upon the directives of the Coordination Committee led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the approval of the recommendation presented by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, headed by Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the precautionary home quarantine system has been approved for the existing cases that do not show symptoms according to specific requirements, commencing on Sunday, 7th of June. Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed clarified that all actions taken and services provided will be in accordance with guidelines and standards approved by the World Health Organization. Dr. Sheikh Mohammed said that the positive cases will be directed to the Comprehensive Disability Center for triaging and assessment. Patients who meet the set criteria and opt to self-isolate at home will be issued an electronic bracelet and receive the needed medical supplies for the isolation period. This will include masks, sterile gloves and basic medications if required. He noted that all asymptomatic cases under home self-quarantine will be monitored daily by health officials and the Be Aware Bahraini app. In this regard, His Excellency Dr. Sheikh Mohammed noted that the importance of reporting any symptoms that may develop, adding that the home self-isolation period is 14 days and a self-isolation exit test appointment will be required in order for patients to be fully discharged. The following is the set criteria for the optional home self-isolation. Patients under 60 years of age, patients with no underlying chronic illnesses, patients who are asymptomatic or with mild symptoms and those not living with individuals with low immunity, patients must have access to a secluded area at the place of residence, patients who understand they must vigilantly follow the home self-isolation guideline. The home self-isolation quarantine measures will also be applied to those living in the same residence and will follow the guidelines for contacts of active cases, which will include an appointment must be scheduled for testing, contacts of active cases must ensure they do not interact with others and do not leave their residence. Should there be an urgent need to leave the residence, masks must be worn in public areas. An exit test must be conducted after 14 days. The Director General of the Capital Governorate Police Department, Brigadier Ibrahim Saif and Najran, has confirmed 159 violations related to requiring everyone to use the face mask in public places since the beginning of June. And Najran noted that a total of 450 violations were recorded since Bahrain made face masks compulsory for people to wear in public areas. The Director General of the Capital Police stressed that security patrols are widespread in the governorate, especially in densely populated residential neighborhoods, streets, malls, shopping malls, including the central market in Manama, where a number of violators have been arrested and the necessary legal measures taken. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active corona cases has risen to 5,181 with 398 registered new cases, while a total of 9,020 recoveries were made. Out of the active cases, 90 are receiving treatment with 13 in critical condition. The Minister of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions, such as washing one's hand with soap on a regular basis, along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact, moreover, covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing, as well as avoiding public spaces when possible. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia reported 3,121 new corona cases, its highest daily toll, bringing the total number of cases in the kingdom to 98,869. 34 people died of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. This raises the virus-related death toll in the kingdom to 676. The capital, Riyadh, recorded the biggest number of new cases, where a total of 900 infections were reported. Jeddah came second with 572 cases. Other cases were detected in cities and provinces across the kingdom. Kuwait reported 487 new coronavirus cases today, bringing the total in the country to 31,131. The Ministry of Health also reported 10 new deaths, raising the death toll to 254. Of the 487 new cases, 195 were Kuwaitis, 81 were Egyptians, 67 Indians, and 47 Bangladeshis. The ministry announced that a further 1,005 people had recovered from COVID-19, bringing the total number of recoveries to 19,282, 
with 11,595 cases currently active. The UAE recorded 624 new coronavirus cases overnight after conducting additional 44,000 tests, bringing the total cases to 37,642. The health ministry said there was also one death overnight, putting the UAE total death toll to 274. Another 765 people, meanwhile, were cleared of COVID-19 infections, bringing recoveries to 20,337. The UAE Health Ministry reiterated its advisory for people to follow social distancing and other preventative measures to avoid coronavirus transmission. Oman recorded 930 new cases of the novel coronavirus, but no new recoveries, which brings the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 16,016. From the new cases reported, 691 were non-Omanis, while Omani citizens totaled 239. The death toll stood at 72, while the total recoveries reached 3,451. Egypt's President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi announced Cairo's plan for a ceasefire in Libya beginning June 8th after meeting with the Libyan National Army General Khalifa Haftar. President Sisi said the political initiative, which he called the Cairo Initiative, would pave the way for a return to normal life in Libya and warned against using military tactics to resolve the crisis. The Cairo Initiative will address all previous international initiatives and decisions that have been made in regards to bringing unity to Libya. Iraq's parliament approved the remainder of Prime Minister Mustafa al kazim's cabinet, making Ihsan Abdel Jabbar Ismail oil minister and passing the candidates for six other government posts. Kazim became Prime Minister last month after five months of political deadlock after his predecessor Adil Abdel Mahdi resigned under pressure from mass anti government protests. Parliament had approved all but seven members of a cabinet of two, 22 portfolios. They passed the nominees for the Oil, Foreign, Trade, Culture, Agriculture, Justice and Migration Ministries. U.S. Special Representative for Iran Brian Hook said the U.S. will continue with its policy of harsh sanctions on Iran in an effort to bring Tehran to the negotiating table. Hook added that the door remains open for a wider negotiation with Iran about its nuclear program and other issues, but so far have been limited to prisoner releases. Hook said the U.S. President Donald Trump has had the door open to diplomacy for many years and in the same time frame he has met North Korean leader Kim Jong-un three times. He added that the U.S. would like to see the Iranian regime meet their diplomacy with diplomacy.